Let the past die. Kill it, if you have to. Deep words from a seemingly shallow villain. Or is there more behind the mask? How you get so big to do hold of this kind? You... You're afraid. That you will never be as strong as Darth Vader. Ben Solo. The kid who became Kylo Ren, also known as Emo Sith Jr. I have to admit it, I've been a fan of Kylo ever since I laid eyes on his mask, and it reminded me of one of my favorite characters from the Legends universe. And when I say fan... Yeah, fan. I swear, I only love him for his mask. Okay, I originally only loved him for his mask. But Kylo gets a lot of flack. From the emo Kylo Ren Twitter account to Adam Driver's amazing digital short on SNL, Kylo's eccentric and often erratic personality is probably the most misunderstood in the entire new trilogy. And I don't mean tall, dark, and mysterious misunderstood. Kylo has presented himself as the heir to Darth Vader. He would be the next great power in the universe. And yet he is petty, undisciplined, and regularly beaten by people who shouldn't have been able to beat him. How could this punk be a villain in the line of Vader? Well, that's the point. Kylo Ren is not Darth Vader, and he hates himself because he's not Darth Vader. Kylo Ren is a joke, but not at all because he's a poorly written character. He's a joke to every other character in The Force Awakens. Now you can just not like that character and that's totally fine. I 100% understand not liking a failed proto-Vader. What's important to me is that you at least understand what you don't like. So if you don't like Kylo Ren because you think he's a poorly written Darth Vader, He's not a poorly written Darth Vader. He's a well-written character who's poor at being Darth Vader. But why is Kylo like this? Why is he this whiny, privileged snot who can't get his act together? Well, I think that's something we finally learn in The Last Jedi. To start, let's compare Ben Solo to Rey. They're opposite in many ways, one of which being their pedigree. Rey, we now know, is the child of drunken scavengers, a literal no one from a planet that even Luke Skywalker of Tatooine says is pretty much nowhere. Ben Solo is a Solo, son of an infamous smuggler turned war hero, a Skywalker descended from Princess Leia of Alderaan, and before her, Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader himself, married to a queen of Naboo. He is far from a nobody. This character, be he Ben Solo or Kylo Ren, can't live up to that mountain of pressure. And that's where Snoke comes in. We already know that Snoke is involved with Ben's corruption somehow. Leia talks about it in The Force Awakens, Luke references it in The Last Jedi, but the details are still unknown. There's almost nothing about this in the expanded universe thus far. In fact, there's probably more written about Luke Skywalker than Ben Solo at this point, and that's saying something because it's been almost nothing about Luke Skywalker. The only tidbit we get is from a novel called Bloodline by Claudia Gray. If you haven't read it, please pause this video and go read that book because I'm about to ruin the emotional turning point of the entire novel. But if you insist on going on, then you insist on going on, you've been warned. So in the old Legends canon, it was a well-known fact that Luke and Leia were siblings born of Anakin Skywalker and that Anakin Skywalker became Darth Vader. In the new canon, what we find out in Bloodline is that it's well known that Luke and Leia are siblings and it's well known that they're the children of Anakin Skywalker, but the galaxy at large still doesn't know that Anakin became Darth Vader. I mean, no one knew. This remained a secret until about six years before The Force Awakens. At the time, Leia was a prominent senator in the New Republic on her way to becoming their equivalent of Chancellor. Her political rivals learned of this fact and used it to tear her down politically. Of course, those political rivals later went on to found the First Order. So going back to the bit where I said no one knew, no one knew, including Ben Solo. Kylo Ren, who worshipped his grandfather Darth Vader, didn't know that Vader was his grandfather until a mere six years before The Force Awakens. Now the novel doesn't tell us how he takes the news, surely he feels betrayed, but this obsession for the dark side of his grandfather grows out of his distrust for the 
good members of his family. And at any rate, I don't want to dwell on the expanding universe too much because the film should be able to stand on their own, but really outside of this one mention in this one book where Ben isn't even seen in the novel, everything else about Kylo has been presented to us by these two movies. In light of all of this, let's talk about the perhaps most controversial scene of The Last Jedi, Luke's attack on Ben. This is the part of the film that I think the most people have the biggest problem with, and understandably so. I think it's important to note that we saw this flashback from two different perspectives from two people who are going to be highly unreliable narrators. But let's kind of break what happens down based off of what Luke has told us. For starters, at the time of this confrontation, we know that Snoke has already corrupted Ben. That's the whole point of having the confrontation. I think it's important to note here that Luke isn't saying that Ben was always evil. Snoke corrupted him, those are his words. You can't corrupt something that's already corrupted, right? So Ben must have been good, must have been light side at some point, and then turned. It's also kind of interesting because it shows that Snoke was already present in the galaxy. Really, we don't know a whole lot of where Snoke came from or when and what his relation to Ben is. And I don't think that's a problem right now. We still have a whole movie to learn it. The second part of this is Luke said he's witnessed a vision of Ben, causing death and destruction. I think a lot of folks saw this as Luke having this vision and then having the calculated decision to ignite his lightsaber as if he was seriously considering striking his nephew down in his sleep. I think what's more likely going on here is that Luke saw this vision of probably the vision of his temple being destroyed and his students being killed, but that is conjecture on my part. He saw this death, he saw this destruction, and he ignited his saber on instinct at the vision before his eyes and not his sleeping nephew before his eyes. Yes, Luke makes it sound like he was considering killing Ben in his sleep, but Luke is also guilt-stricken at this point and probably being a little bit more hard on himself than what was actually happening. It's also important to remember that, for all we know, Ben was already planning this attack on this new Jedi Order and already had his Knights of Ren picked out. Seeing this destruction doesn't excuse Luke's actions, but they do put them into a context that probably makes a little bit more sense. Remember, yes, Luke is the guy who refused to kill Darth Vader at the end of their duel in Return of the Jedi, but that's only after he beat Vader to a point where Vader couldn't defend himself anymore. This is not the face of a man who calmly, wisely, and justly beat a villain. This is the face of a, of a man who's on the brink of becoming a villain himself, but then chose to walk away. So, do I think that Luke, in a moment of impulse, would see a vision and ignite his lightsaber? Absolutely. Do I think that Luke would slay his nephew in his sleep? No. Unfortunately, that distinction doesn't matter. All that matters is what Ben saw. This creates a totally feasible moment for Ben to hate yet another parental figure in his life who has lied or used him in some way. This time, in a much more intense and murderous way. His parents had kept the truth of his dark side potential from him, and now his uncle tried to murder him. And in all of this, there's Snoke somewhere out there who's already shown interest in him and presumably has already offered to help him. So yes, Kylo Ren is the angsty Ben Solo who's been let down by the three greatest heroes in the entire galaxy, who also happen to be his family. So instead, he seeks out comfort from the current greatest villain in the galaxy in order to protect himself from the calls to the light, the side of the force that has always lied to him. What's really interesting to me is when he meets Rey and they have the interrogation scene, she pulls out of his mind his greatest fear. And then in response, this savage, undisciplined punk leaves her alone and later offers to train her. Isn't that kind of interesting? She just embarrassed him. She just reveal his deepest fear, he doesn't even think about killing her. Why? Well, I think we find out pretty fast in The Last Jedi. However, I'm gonna have to leave you on a cliffhanger there. This vlog already got significantly longer than I expected it to be. So I'm gonna end it here. I hope you enjoyed this summary of how Ben Solo became Kylo Ren. Very shortly, I'm going to publish a part two to this where I'm going to talk about Kylo and his evolution in The Last Jedi and his relationship with Rey and how that develops. So keep an eye out for that. As always in the comments, feel, please feel free to tell me if I'm wrong, what you liked, what you didn't, what you'd like to see me do. Follow us on Twitter, come check us out on Port Haven, and until next time, keep it real and fly casual. Cooking can be fun.